on this Friday, April the 4th. You're watching the VSB Evening News. I'm Kristen Martinez, and here's our top story. With view of protecting local interests and the reputation of Bermuda as a whole, Home Affairs Minister Senator Michael Fay today announced that he has denied work permits to the Canadian documentary film crew seeking to reconstruct the events surrounding the 1996 murder of 17-year-old Rebecca Middleton. Confirming this action to VSB, the minister said that the tragic events that took place 18 years ago marked a very dark time in Bermuda's history and since then considerable lessons had been learned particularly as it relates to our criminal justice system. As a result, significant steps were taken from a legislative and police procedural standpoint to address any deficiencies in our system. The film was to be made using local actors in reenactments of the murder by Cineflix, a Montreal film company currently making a series called Murder in Paradise for the U.S. Slice Network and the Canadian Discovery ID channel. Vanessa Marr, spokesperson for Cineflex, confirmed to VSB News this evening that the company was refused work permits and not able to reverse that decision. The firm was moving forward with the production and would be conducting interviews outside of Bermuda and in some cases flying people up to Canada. Transport Minister Sean Crockwell today accused his shadow Lawrence Scott of making misleading and incorrect allegations concerning the Department of Marine and Ports in a recent statement. VSB News' Brian Darby has the details. Minister Crockwell had an answer for most of the allegations made by Mr. Scott, but I'm going to restrict myself to just the items that we reported to you yesterday. For instance, Mr. Scott claimed that the reported creation of new posts within the department seemingly tailored for non-Bermudians, while ignoring the capable, qualified Bermudians in the department, had generated a major concern among the staff. Mr. Crockwell replied that the posts in question were not new, but reflected managerial changes commenced two years ago and recently demanded by the Bermuda Industrial Union to effect improvements in fleet operation and maintenance. Both posts were advertised locally, but when no suitable local applicant was identified to the satisfaction of the Bermuda Public Service Commission, the posts were advertised overseas. Minister Crockwell's statement failed to address the issue of the delay in the holding of a promised internal audit. Brian Darby reporting for VSB News. The problems that our economy will face in the event of a decreasing population are not a matter for future action. They are already with us, according to statistician Cordell Riley. If you look at the cost of things, you might say to yourself, I can't afford children, and so you don't have them. And, and that's the dilemma that we're in. Uh, people talk about teenage pregnancies, but they have been on the decline for a number of years. Uh, and so the population is, uh, the rate of the increase is slowing because people are simply not having children. Now, I can see the government need for revenue at, yes. at the back of all this. Um, the country has to have revenue, and that's what coming from your middle tranche as well, isn't that's, it? That's correct. Uh, so your working population, and so if your working population uh, is, is decreasing, we've gone from a high of about 40,000 jobs now to, to about 34,500. So we lost just uh, under, uh, just under 6,000 jobs uh, in the economy. And so you, you multiply that by the amount of earning, income earning, and you can see uh, the amount of revenue that's no longer uh, in the economy. And that's the, you know, that's why we hear terms such as commercial immigration and those things like that. But that's only part of the, 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 the equation because if you look at, say, places, the fastest growing community, or the fastest growing states in the United States, uh, being Atlanta and Texas, have negative G GDP growth. So population is only one part of the equation. The other one is productivity. And so are you going to increase your productivity? And of course, technology helps with an increase in productivity, and therefore you can also get an increase in your GDP. But right now the focus is on commercial immigration or bringing in more people because that's kind of the easiest thing to do, certainly in, in the short term. Well, these could be workers too, not just people who have money and want to spend the It best. could be workers. It could be workers as well. But you're not, you're not going to bring in workers if there are no jobs. Yeah, and the challenge with the model, the, certainly the international business model, um, those jobs are not likely to come back. So we're looking at uh, a whole new paradigm uh, for our country. Where is the, the third pillar going to come from? So I think we heard talk about you know, the blue economy. Um, so we've got to be looking at things in terms of how you're going to increase these jobs because the old models uh, are simply outdated. 
If the subject of population interests you, you can watch the film The Population Paradox at 9 p.m. tonight on VSB TV 11 as part of our series of films designed to mark Environmental Awareness Month. Bermuda's public school principals have entered the controversy over their embattled boss, Education Commissioner Dr. Edmund Heatley. Through their union, the BPSU, the principals, in a strongly worded statement, have declared a vote of no confidence in Dr. Heatley for his perceived lack of commitment to Bermuda school children. VSB's Chris Lodge has the story. The principals say they believe that the school system deserves to have a commissioner who is committed, resilient, and who operates with transparency, honesty, and respect towards educators, parents, students, and the wider community. Their statement saying these essential qualities have not been demonstrated by the current commissioner. Shadow Education Minister Walton Brown saying last night he fully concurs with the position taken by the principals and that he fully expects that Dr. Heatley's tenure as commissioner Commissioner will come to an end soon. The Education Ministry also responded last night saying they acknowledge the position of the principals and will factor their clear concerns into the ongoing review of the Commissioner's position. The statement saying the Commissioner met with a subcommittee of the Board of Education and the full board has met to consider their position. And the statement concludes the matter is under active consideration and is being addressed at the highest level with full attention. I'm Chris Lodge, VSB News. A 29-year-old man appeared in magistrate's court on charges of drug possession. Roderick Butler pleaded guilty to possessing 4.18 grams of cannabis in November of 2013. The court heard that police were called to his home on another matter and found the cannabis in a bedroom in his Warwick residence. In court, Butler said that he had been having family issues and was using the cannabis as a sedative to cope with his personal problems. In response, Senior Magistrate Archibald Warner told the defendant to try other legal means of coping with problems. The charge was Butler's first offense and counsel requested that Butler be given a conditional discharge. However, Senior Acting Magistrate Marchbald Warner said that he had to come and make his ruling according to the law, and with that, he meted out a $500 fine. And still ahead is Che with the weather preview. Thanks, Kristen. Hey, let's take a look at the Doppler radar. Well, there's not much going on right now, which means there's going to be a lot going on for me this weekend. I'll have more coming up later about the weather, not about what I'm doing. Well, maybe that too. The weather radar picture provided courtesy of the Ministry of Transport on VSB TV 11. You can count on us. Save a dollar fifty on a family pack of Purdue Fresh Chicken Drumsticks, a dollar ninety nine per pound. Inputted fresh asparagus, two ninety nine per pound. Save ninety cents on Shoprite Pure Cane Sugar, two thirty nine for a four pound bag. Kraft American Cheese Singles, four sixty nine for a twelve ounce package. Save a dollar on Minute Maid Orange Juice, four nineteen for a fifty nine ounce carton. All stores open Monday through Saturday until 10 p.m. and Sunday 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. Diagnostic service at its best. Stop by Bermuda's premier automobile dealership and service center. Auto Solutions. Whirl with us.
health care matters. And building a new facility would just add to the care of the citizens. Because we should all be provided with the best services Bermuda hospitals can offer. Up-to-date innovative technology and care is the very essence of quality life. For all the reasons why health care matters, we hope you'll consider donating to the Bermuda Hospital Charitable Trust. Visit our website, whyitmatters.bm, or call 295-2428. Environmental scientist Dr. Annie Glasspool, author of the 2008 National Trust Report on the Effects of Climate Change in Bermuda, said today that the global doubts over man's impact on his climate have been replaced by the knowledge that the threat is real. VSB News' Brian Darby asked her if this altered her findings. When you wrote your report, which on behalf of the National Trust, which the government debated in, in Parliament, so obviously they took it seriously, yeah. you had to say in many parts of your chapters on everything um, that the jury was still out. Has that yeah. changed? Um, the International Panel on Climate Change has just come out uh, with their fifth assessment. So they've been doing this for 25 years now. Um, and what is perhaps noticeable about this um, series of reports is that the language has changed. Um, it's changed from uh, climate change will to climate change is. Um, basically, we're, it's happening. We're part of it. Um, now, we sit here in Bermuda and we may say, well, that's great. It's not too bad. You know, nothing, nothing drastic's happened. Um, I think uh, one of the uh, issues is that uh, it, it happens in, at different paces in different parts of the world. Um, and the key, of course, is that Bermuda is, uh, although we're isolated geographically, um, we're so dependent on the market uh, forces, external market forces. So what happens elsewhere will certainly impact us. And of course, it will, it will impact us, and it is happening here, just subtly. Now we all know about acid rain. We hear worrying things about the Gulf Stream slowing down. Um, so it's really very close to home, isn't it? It's, it's very close to home, and I think uh, there are some things we can adapt to, and there's some things we're not going to be able to adapt to. We, uh, you know, adapting to sea level rise, you know, as it's happening, and it has been happening over the, over the uh, decades, uh, is challenging. Um, there's not much we can do about it. Um, and the other big one is ocean acidification. Um, we are protected uh, and supported and enhanced by our coral reef system. Um, the increasing levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere um, cause uh, acidification. The ocean basic basically absorbs much of that, causes acidification, and that slows the growth of corals, you know, crabs, anything that has a limestone calcareous um, shell. Um, when your scientists get together now, um, I suppose the arguments have stopped. Now they're looking for the solutions. I, I think that's a very important point to make. Um, there was a survey done about 12 months ago of climate scientists, and uh, there was universal acceptance for 97% of that, of that group that climate change is driven by man-made, uh, largely driven by man-made uh, influences. It's a, big move. Um, it's, a, it's a big move, and so, yes, you're correct. Now it's um, how to, you know, well, it's still, of course, a question of studying it. We, we don't know all the answers. The, a lot of it's done on modeling, um, so it's, it's a question of undertaking the science to uh, confirm those models or, or, or disprove those models. Um, but also I think it's time that we start translating science into policy and action. Uh, and that is happening uh, in many places. Bermuda's Governor George Ferguson put a word in for the Bermudian student interested in a career in insurance, but unable to clear the interview hurdle when he opened the new offices of the Bermuda Insurance Institute in Sophia House. I think there's also a very real challenge to get uh, education in insurance as an outreach program within Bermuda. I was mentioning before we, we came in a, uh, a story that uh, I picked up last year of a major insurance company who advertised for a couple of posts at entry level, had a large number of applications, all of whom had the right educational background, but none of them made it through the selection process mainly because of fundamental things like um, sort of unrealistic aspirations all to be CEOs within 10 minutes or whatever but they were, they were things that were um, addressable and one of the things that I've pondered since is the scope for individual companies maybe in partnership with BII to do outreach programs to the people who apply to those sort of jobs and are turned down. 
These are people who put their hands up and mm. said, I'm interested in the industry. Uh, and instead of just getting a Dear John letter, uh, used those as people to whom rather more outreach in terms of you're interested, these are the steps that you really need to take in order to do better at the interview next time. Students in Bermuda will be learning the value of sustainability due to an eco schools program that has been launched. The program is an internationally accredited scheme that focuses on empowering students to be able to make a more sustainable world in the future. Green Rock is heading up the program, which is divided into seven phases of sustainability. Students will set up an eco school committee and will carry out an environmental review of their school. They will then create a plan to monitor and evaluate sustainable techniques. Eight schools are participating in the program, including Bermuda College, Victor Scott Primary School, West Pembroke Primary School, and Warwick Academy. It is the hope that after completing the program, students will be equipped with the awareness and tools to ensure that Bermuda has a bright, sustainable future. Work to resurface Reed Street between Queen Street and Burnaby Hill will start on April 12, 2014 at 6 p.m. The resurfacing work will occur in sections over three weekends starting at 6 p.m. on Saturday, April 12 with the roads reopening on Sunday at 5 p.m. The resurface section will be complete with no ramps or transitions when the road reopens. Road markings will be remarked before 8 a.m. during the week. To accomplish the goals of achieving the least impact to the local businesses and getting best value from the contractor, the corporation determined that the best way to accomplish this was to close the road to all vehicular traffic during that time period. Pedestrian access will remain open on sidewalks. Business owners should be aware that there will be no garbage collection for bars and restaurants on Sunday, April the 13th. However, garbage can be placed on Queen Street for collection. Now, here's a look at the daily markets presented by Bias. Stocks in the U.S. tumbled, with the Nasdaq falling the most in two months. Treasuries rallied as jobs data boosted speculation that the Fed will remain accommodative on rates. U.S. stocks dropped, with the Nasdaq dropping 2.6 percent as technology shares slumped. The S&P fell 1.25 percent to close at 18.65 after rallying as much as 0.5 percent earlier in the day. 179,951 shares of Bank of Butterfield traded hands today. The stock closed at $1.98 unchanged on the day. Other Bermuda-related stocks slipped in line with U.S. stocks. European stocks climbed to their highest since 2008 on merger and acquisition day activity as U.S. payrolls and manufacturing data increased optimism. Asian equity markets were mixed today. Japan, Japan's Nikkei slipped from three-week highs today as investors cautiously awaited the release of U.S. jobs data and on speculation that the Bank of Japan may adopt more stimulus next week. Latin American indices fell on the day. The Bovespa dropped 0.63% to close at 51,082 as Brazilian financial stocks fell. U.S. Treasury prices rallied and yields fell the most since January after a report showed U.S. employers added fewer employees than forecasted. Ten-year yields shaved seven basis points to close at 2.73%. The U.S. dollar fell for the first time in seven days against the yen as non-farm payroll rose 192,000 in March versus the forecast of 200,000. And that was a look at the daily markets brought to you by Bias. Save $2 on juicy sweet cantaloupes, just $3.99 each. XL Fresh Country Style Pork Spear Ribs, $2.69 per pound. $3.69 for a package of four bird's eye frozen corn on the cob. Buy one 5.5 ounce tin of Lay's Stacks Chips and get the second one free. Two tins for $2.42. Simply Toilet Tissue, $3.49 for a package of four double rolls. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more super specials. You can for much more furniture, visit Bermuda's only Ashley Furniture Gallery. Big savings zone. You want the best? 
Forget the rest. For all your furniture needs, shop Big Saving Zone and support your local retailers. Have you ever ordered something online expecting it to be a certain price, but when it arrives it ends up being a whole lot more? Beware of those unexpected hidden fees. That never happens at Big Saving Zone. Open Tuesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Big Saving Zone, at the end of Stocks Road, St. David's. Do you know your rights as a consumer? Visit the Consumer Affairs website to find out how to hire a contractor, how to buy and maintain your vehicle, information on buying secondhand goods, tips for seniors and teens, personal finance tips, product recall information, to file a complaint with Consumer Affairs. For the latest consumer news and much more, visit ca.gov.bm. April is Environmental Awareness Month and VSB TV 11 is airing relevant documentaries exploring environmental issues concerning all of us on Wednesdays and Fridays at 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. for the month of April. Sponsored by Auto Solutions, Roll With Us, Belco, The Power to Save, and Lindos, Why Go Any Place Else? Environmental Awareness Month on VSB TV 11. Peter Javedic is the host of Season to Taste. The second series starts on Tuesday, the 15th of April, when Peter will be helping some of Bermuda's finest chefs with their recipes, an exclusive presentation of Lindo's. There'll also be the Wine of the Week, specially selected wines from Gosling's. Season to Taste is featured during the VSB TV 11 Evening News at 7.30, 8.30 and midnight on Tuesdays, starting the 15th of April. Joey Brozovich Jr. of Canada will face Bermuda's Jamel Goofy Woolridge in the main bout of Teachers Fight Night wants to avenge the defeat of his instructor. Brozovich, who is deaf, spoke to VSB Sports through his coach. All of the action is scheduled for tomorrow night at the Barclay Gymnasium. Speaking now with Chris Q, the coach of Joey Brozovich <coughs> Jr., uh, who's going to be going up against uh, our, our big guy, Woolridge. How does he feel about going up against uh, uh, what we call our super champion? Yeah, we're, we're, we're well aware of, um, of Goofy. We've had uh, two of our athletes compete against him in the past. So Joey's very excited to avenge the defeat of Jeremy Hawkridge. Um, you know, Joey and Jeremy worked very closely together to prepare specifically for the local hero. Mm -hmm. What's his record and where does he fight mainly? I mean, yeah. is this his first fight outside of Canada? No, he's fought, he's fought strictly in the United States at this time. Um, he is undefeated in Kayakoshin Karate, which is a full contact karate style, and he's also undefeated in mixed martial arts. He's uh, currently fighting for the XFC based out of Detroit, Michigan. Okay. Chris, being deaf <clears throat> in the ring, how does he, he, the atmosphere, how does he deal with that? Um, you know, he can feel the energy. You have to remember that the, the crowd gives up off a vibration. So the louder the crowd gets, the harder Joey fights. So it's very, very, very exciting to watch. Um, you know, Joey's biggest challenge has been, you know, the officials trying to stop him. Ah. <laughs> so he's really looking forward to this one then. Yeah, he is. Like I said, um, you know, uh, Mr. Woolrich defeated one of our one of our instructors in the past, uh, Jeremy Hawkridge. Right. And uh, you know, Joey's Joey's put in six days a week training for this for the last four weeks, um, you know, to avenge that defeat. Right. Can he give me some sort of uh, reaction as to what he what, what, what he plans? thinks about? <laughs> Shelby Marchand, welcome to Bermuda. I understand you're here going up against uh, Talia Iris. Uh, but what division is that? And tell me more about yourself. Well, I'm going to be in the featherweight division. And I have done five exhibi exhibition bouts. And I'm from Canada. And I'm really looking forward to yeah. well, having a bout in your country. Yeah. Have you fought outside of Canada before? Uh, no, I haven't. I've never been outside of Canada. <laughs> this is your... Yes. So this is special to yes, you. Very special. I love it here. Don't <laughs> want to go back home. <laughs>
Choose to be healthy, Bermuda. Get out there and exercise with a sunscreen hat and shirt on every day. Eat healthy, don't smoke, and check your brown spots once a month to detect skin cancer early. Anything growing darker, bigger, jagged borders needs to be checked. Wear your sunscreen, hat, and shirt every day. Be sun safe, Bermuda. Well, another beautiful day and me latched to my desk, but you know what? Hopefully this weekend is going to be great. I'm Jay Barker, and this is your weather. Our highs and lows for today, and look at that, the temperature was really pleasant, 73 degrees, 1.15 p.m. Our low was all the way down just at 67 at 3 a.m. this morning. Currently, we're looking at 69 degrees, humidity is around 80 percent, winds out of the west at 17 knots, and the barometric pressure is unsteady at 30.04 inches. Well, no rain for today, just a point one of an inch, point zero one of an inch for April so far. Brings our total all the way to 19.1 inches, still way up on that 15.26 we'd normally have seen. Take a look at our satellite map. Well, you can see this high pressure is going to continue to build in the area from the south tonight and right into tomorrow. Expect fair conditions to persist right through the weekend, which is great news. On Sunday, a boundary will approach from the north, bringing a few showers overnight and into Monday. Winds will then increase moderate to strong on Tuesday. In the gateway cities, we're looking at 68 in Atlanta and partly cloudy, partly cloudy and 52 in Boston, mostly sunny and 71 in Charlotte, London, it's cloudy and 59, 83 and partly cloudy in Miami, New York, partly cloudy, 59 degrees, 87 and mostly cloudy in Orlando, 47 and mostly cloudy in Philadelphia, Toronto, cloudy and 41, and 63 and mostly cloudy in Washington. For tonight, mostly cloudy, one or two showers overnight, low of around 66, winds out of the west. 12 to 18 knots. For tomorrow, high temperature, great 73 degrees, sunny periods, becoming cloudy by the afternoon. Look out for me on the paddleboard. First time for the year, so it's looking good. Winds out of the west at 10 to 15 knots, and they'll back off of the southwest overnight. For mariners tonight, there's a small craft warning in effect. Seas inside the reef 1 to 2 feet, but seas outside the reef 6 to 9 feet. Sea temperatures come up to 69 degrees. For Marius tomorrow, still a small craft warning in effect. Seas inside the reef, 1 to 2 feet. Seas outside the reef, 6 to 9 feet. High tide, 628 a.m. and low tide at 119 p.m. Let's take a look at our five-day forecast. Well, as you can see, looks like great temperature, great weather for the weekend. Saturday, sunny periods, partly cloudy by the afternoon, high of 73. Sunday, sunny breaks with a few showers overnight, high of 73. Monday, sunny breaks with a few daytime showers, high of 72. Tuesday, partly cloudy and a high of 74. And Wednesday, mostly cloudy, evening showers, high of around 73. I'd like to thank the Bermuda Weather Service for all their help. And it's the weekend, so as we all know, eat, sleep, rave, repeat. But if you're going to be going out, make sure you don't drink and drive. Get home safely. Be good. Look for me. I'll be out on the water like this. Seriously. Anyway, enjoy yourself. I'll see you guys real soon. From all of us here at VSB, I'm Kristen Martinez, and have a great weekend. Wardrobe and makeup for Kristen Martinez, provided by Gibbons Company. VSB, TV11, Bermuda.